Herkese merhabalar. Bugün çok çok sevgili iki tane konuğum var. Bir tanesi ta Hindistan'dan sevgili homeopat doktorumuz Samir. Bir diğeri de Biricik Deniz. Bugün Nisan ayı biliyorsunuz otizm ayı olduğu için otizmle ilgili konuşacağız. Onların önerilerini alacağız, deneyimlerinden yararlanacağız. Hi everyone. Hello. How are you Samir? I am good uh, Damla. Hi Deniz. Hi Damla. How are Hi. you? Uh, as you know, actually you know better than me, uh, this month is a special month. Uh, and also this is your special area. So uh, could you please uh, tell us about what is autism? Uh, okay, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. And uh, by neurodevelopment, uh, I mean that there is a pervasiveness in all the areas of development of a child. And it is usually diagnosed between zero to three years of age. And as we all homeopaths know that, uh, or rather everybody knows that it has to be diagnosed as early as possible. And if it is diagnosed early, the chances of uh, uh, recovery are much higher. And in autism, basically there is a problem of communication that the child is not able to communicate with anybody, with his peers. The child is not able to speak. So there is a language deficit. There is a behavioral problems also whereby there are some temper tantrums. There is hyperactivity or hypoactivity. There are uh, hyper sensations as well as hypo sensations also. So in all, it uh, covers the whole child. And uh, as I have told you, there are problems with the sensory, there are problems with the motor aspect. Motor means the way they use the fine motor aspects, the children are not able to use. Basically, the parents come with the problem that the child has regressed. One of the most important thing in autism is regression. Mm -hmm. That means the child is traveling normally in its milestones, is developing properly. He also starts speaking. But at a particular time, he starts regressing back due to some ailment. And that ailment could be an infection, it could be antibiotics, it could be stress, it could be fear, fright, anything. So as homeopaths, we have to look at this factor that has led to regression. And then the selection of the remedy is much better. So this is, in short, what autism is all about. Um, you mentioned that... Um, they have their own uh, kind of communication. I mean, uh, are they building this communication system on their own? Or, for example, it is the same for all the uh, autism cases? Uh, see, uh, basically, I want to tell you that homeopathy is an individualistic science. So, uh, autism children, they have a particular set of symptoms, which are the symptoms of the problem. As homeopaths, we are not interested in the symptoms of the problem. But we are interested in the symptoms of the person as a whole. It is a holistic science and every child is different. Every child has got a divine potential. Yeah. Which means, yeah. So every child is special. We cannot say that this child is special or that child is special. And by special, I don't mean disabled. Special means really special. Every child has his or her own strengths. And therefore, every child is different. So homeopathy looks at children as individuals not as autism. We are not interested in the diagnosis as such. We are not interested in whether he's autistic or whether he's ADHD or whether he's uh, dyslexic. These diagnoses are important as far as uh, the follow-up is concerned. I mean, when I when we give a homeopathic medicine to a child, uh, he comes after a month and then what are the differences in him? For that, the diagnosis is important. As far as, far as the homeopath is concerned, the homeopathic diagnosis, that means how is he as a person? What are his fears? What are his anxieties? What are his hobbies? How does he uh, relate to his environment? How is he in his peers? How is he with his friends? These are important things that we should know. And one more thing which I am uh, specifically doing research on is the mother's uh, health during pregnancy. Because I have seen at least 90 to 95 percent, which is a big percentage, that children who are autistic or children who have some mental or behavioral problems uh, there has been a clear indication that the mother was not happy during pregnancy. So either there was some kind of physical or verbal abuse or some kind of uh, uh, sadness, some kind of discontent. So this is very, very important. 
which we have to look at. Okay. And Denise? Yes. Uh, English or in Turkish? <laughs> <laughs> um, you want me to speak it in Turkish or can I continue? It doesn't matter. Uh, okay. I just want the content of the video. Okay. Um, as uh, Samir talked about uh, what is autism and how they uh, communicate with the special uh, children. Uh, as a mother, uh, what is your experience about it? How can we uh, create a communication between uh, these special kids? Uh, generally, they use body language. Uh, they just show the, the things that they want mm -hmm. and they insist on the things that they want. But uh, as I deal with special education also, we have a special method for learning uh, and teaching them languages. Mm -hmm. One of them is sign languages. One of them is text. It is called pictures exchange method. Then uh, we can change pictures instead of materials. Instead of words, we use pictures on it. Uh, also, sign languages can be used. Uh, some autistic children can speak with speech therapy, but uh, generally most of them insist on uh, speaking because they insist on communication. They don't want to communicate with us. They want to be alone and they want to live in their world. They just want to communicate when they need something. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, that's the word of autism, to be in his world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure their words are much more better than ours. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, they understand the feelings and they understand the things about it. Uh, they can also telepathic understanding. Uh, wow. Yes. <laughs> and have you ever experienced uh, homeopaths like Samir? Denise? Uh, ten years ago, uh, I uh, three or four uh, parts I used. Once a month, uh, I take homeopathic uh, insurance. It's about ten years ago. But uh, I just stop this including. Samir, are you there? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Uh, Very interesting. What, children, what they uh, need? Is yeah. two, 22 years old. Uh, ah, that's okay. why 10 years ago I used this. I I'm, spent uh, a lot uh, of I, time. It's about 20 years with an autism people. Yes, yes. I, I would. Add to uh, Den what Denise patient. said. Uh, yeah, I would add to what Denise says that uh, I also know a mother whose child is around uh, 26 or 28 years old, and she's also from uh, she's from uh, Bodrum, and uh, I am treating her for her child also, and uh, it's really uh, commendable, uh, and I would really appreciate these mothers that they do such a lot. Not only for their child, but also for the whole autism community. And I really salute all these mothers. They are doing a really good work. Thank you. Uh, I want to be a, a big coach for the other mothers because it's a long yes. way. And yes. uh, I could understand all the mothers since I live yes. with, Absolutely. as they, Absolutely. they live. Absolutely. Yes. Samir, what kind of advices uh, you are giving to mothers, to the parents? The first thing is that when the mothers come to us with uh, uh, these kids, they expect a sort of magic because uh, they have done a lot of treatments, they have gone to many doctors, they have got many biofeedbacks and they have done diets and so many things they have done, craniosacral therapy and uh, even uh, uh, cannabis, even cannabinoids uh, are being given to children, uh, which is very common I have seen that they give oil. Uh, TLC oils uh, to treat the hyperactivity of children, uh, but it it is uh, uh, just like we are making the child addict. I feel. I mean, yes, it really cools down the child, but cannabis is after all cannabis. So, 
i always uh, tell them that uh, don't panic and don't be very happy once the treatment starts the child shows good response many a time the child also shows some negative response so they get panicky so the first thing i would like to tell all parents of autistic children is that please don't panic please don't be sad if the child shows some negative effects please don't be very happy if the child becomes positive which means that it is a slow steady improvement in the children so they have to be patient minimum 6 months to 1 year of proper homeopathic treatment and most of these children can recover very well many of my uh, children have started speaking also they did not speak they started speaking their hyperactivity reduced their uh, attention span also improved they started going to a normal school they did not require a shadow teacher most important is especially grown up children like i i think dennis has a grown up boy and uh, the three or four patients the adult patients i am treating they are quite violent they were quite violent with their mothers i mean uh, they have this shaking of hands they become very violent they can even hold their mother tightly they can injure yes yes they can injure themselves as well as their mothers and their parents also so homeopathy has done a very very important thing in reducing their violence and making them calm which uh, everybody is very happy with and i also reduce all the children who are taking this cannabis or cannabinoid oils and they are away from this and they are only on homeopathy which is not an addictive thing once the children feel better the homeopathy can be stopped they don't have to continue homeopathy for a long time homeopathy does not have any side effects that is the most important thing so it does not cause any problems so i uh, uh, genuinely i feel that all the children with autism they should try homeopathy once at least and at least there is no negative effect i think yes homeopathy yes. that's true that's true that's true. And most of the medicines have negative effect yes the allopathic medicine the english medicines usually the allopathic medicines any like uh, ritalin which is used for hyperactivity the resveratrol ritalin all these they numb the child the child becomes sleepy the hyperactive child becomes hypoactive we are not interested in making the child hypoactive we we need we need to see our child laughing smiling jumping playing we don't want yeah, the child to sit in one corner they are exactly. hyperkinesthetic because they want to move exactly. their body wants to move exactly so you cannot give them some drugs to silence them because their body wants to move you cannot numb them so homeopathy what homeopathy does it it brings the child to a moderate level not hypo or hyper it brings them to moderate Mm -hmm. And then is uh, what are your suggestions for uh, mothers? I think uh, the love has a best energy. Yes. Uh, uh, advise them, love and expect their children. And it must be very uh, exhausting uh, for you to uh, be the mother. so uh, sometimes a mother can be feel a little bit tired exhausted or a little bit angry during these days uh, what kind of things they can experience what can what kind of solutions they can find uh, they need somebody to help them yeah uh, i have a coach uh, who works with my boy uh, and uh, they they do Uh, sporting activities like playing tennis running uh, swimming uh, it is good for my son mm -hmm. and uh, it is good for me because this hours will be good for me to have any rest yes so uh, i offer them to have a, to need, if they need a help offer help Don't be super mother. No one can be super. Accept mm. your children. Accept yourself that you are not super, and no, and help each other with yeah, love. Very nice. Very nice. It's a team job, then. Yes. Yeah. It's a team yeah. job. It's a uh, exhausted job, and uh, duration is all life. 
uh, I spent 20 years and I know it about 1000 uh, autistic children. So you are not alone. Uh, 60% of children is an autistic now. So you are not alone. You can have an expression of having a child's special needs. So when you need help, just offer help and accept your children that he's special. Uh, that's what I can say. And what about the fathers? <laughs> I mean, we're <laughs> always talking about the mothers, but where are they? Come on. <laughs> uh, they, should, they also accept their children and love and be a part of the team. They yeah. should. Because uh, parents have two people, mother and father. And if you have a ch children, you can now give up to be a mother or father. You can give up all the uh, works or the jobs. You can give up, but you cannot give up to be parent. And Samir, what, what about your experiences? I mean, uh, in general, I think mothers are uh, bringing their uh, children yes. to you. Yes. So uh, that's what I, w I wanted to tell Dennis that uh, I have seen quite a number of patients now, uh, people now, and parents are coming. And uh, uh, I was had to see that maybe 90% of the children are brought by their mothers only. So I don't see their fathers at all. Number two is, uh, uh, I have also seen, when I was taking the history of the mother also, along with the child, the mother told me that there was a lot of abuse. There was a lot of verbal, physical abuse during the pregnancy. The child was unwanted and uh, the father was quite irresponsible at that time. The father wanted to leave them. And now also, along with the child, uh, with this child, Either the father is either accepting him completely or they are not accepting him. So it's like a uh, all or none phenomenon. There is not acceptance and trying to do something. There is complete acceptance is there. The father is like a mother to the child and takes whole care of the child. But I also see fathers who are absolutely irresponsible, not looking after the kids, putting the responsibility on the mother. So uh, it's a saddening thing to see that the fathers don't contribute as much as they should in the treatment of their children. That's what I have seen. That's my experience. And mothers, my they special do education, extra. I also yeah. see that. Yeah. And mothers, they take extra In my special education as, yeah. center, it's also the same. Yeah. As the percentage said, is the same in Turkey. Yeah. 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 As, uh, <laughs> uh, as Dennis was talking about super women or super mother, most of the mothers I have seen are super mothers. Or at least they try to be super mothers. Many of them are super mothers. Uh, I know that they are really doing uh, everything to see to it that their child is okay. And they are really trying very hard, running from pillar to post for their child and trying to do every treatment for their child. But it is sad that their fathers are not equally uh, uh, contributing actively. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to ask another question to both of you. Um, you said that uh, these special ch children have their own world and they don't want to be in our world. But uh, if it is good for them to uh, be interactive with other uh, special children or with other people, and how can we uh, create a platform for them? As I have said initially also that every child is different. So there are ch children with autism whom I have seen that they would like to mix with people also, play with people, playful. They are very playful and they like to play. There are some children who like to be alone. So there are different types of children and there are different types of nature of children on which the homeopathic remedies are based on. For example, uh, in homeopathy, there are certain remedies where the children are very, very mixing, very, very jovial, very, very nice. They like kissing others. They like caressing others. So there is this uh, thing for touching. So homeopathic remedies are for such children also. 
while there are children who don't like to be touched who like to be alone who play with their own toys they don't like anyone near them so there are different types of children so we'll have to look at each child individually there is nothing like a specific medicine for autism every child is different and we'll have to deal every child on its own uh, uh, merit that is what i would like to say this would you like to say anything about it Uh, I also accept it that every child uh, should be in new case. Yeah. It's special education, special case, special person. And uh, Samir, can you please uh, explain us what kind of process that you are following during a, uh, during uh, a patient uh, coming to you? yeah first of all when the patient or when the child comes with his mother to us we take a history of the child about how he was born it's right from the birth history so how was the birth whether the birth was normal or no whether the birth was cesarean whether the birth was by forceps and once the birth happened before the birth of course how was the pregnancy how was the lady during the pregnancy was she happy was she not happy was she getting enough food to eat one of the examples i would like to tell you is that one of my patients uh, uh, the child's mother was pregnant and there was a earthquake this was a patient from uh, istanbul only where there was a uh, earthquake and the husband and everybody was busy uh, doing their own things and the pregnant lady was alone and she did not have any support there was nobody to hold the lady to bring her outside when there was a earthquake so this history became very very important in describing the remedy for the child so therefore the mother's history during the pregnancy how was her delivery how was her lactation because even during lactation if she is not in a good mood if somebody is torturing her if her in-laws are torturing the husband is torturing the husband is a drunkard the husband abuses her husband is irresponsible even when she is giving milk to the child this milk will be transmitted to the child and this energy will go into the child and the child can become autistic similarly when the child was born whether he was born properly did he cry after birth this is a very very important issue what are the vaccines given to child because many a times after vaccination there is a autism and we have to find out the clear history because the mothers will say that my mother or my child was absolutely normal but when i gave him the mmr vaccine he suddenly regressed so this history is also very very important and then we look at the child while i am taking history or while my assistant is taking history i just look at the child as denis said that they have a typical body language so some children are doing something some children are doing something else so when we look at the child our remedy also changes accordingly some children like to sit in one place when the mother tells them to sit some children are restless here and there one of the children one of the child i saw was that i had kept a plate of biscuits and he immediately came and started eating all the biscuits so that also is a homeopathic symptom Mm-hmm. one child was just sitting with his mother like a good child so there are, there are certain very very good children whom you feel what is the problem there is no problem with this child at all and the mother would say oh he is not able to speak but he is a very very good boy at the same time another mother would say that my child bites everybody my child scratches everybody pulls hair spits on somebody licks his saliva so there are different types of children so this is what we get we write down all the history and then compare it with 3000 remedies in homeopathy and find out the right remedy for the child only one remedy can be given out of the 3000 or 4000 homeopathic remedy so that's what i want to say that there are many doctors or many homeopaths who give three four homeopathic remedies at one time no that is not right always homeopathic remedy is always one and it is one for the baby one remedy one child it's like that so this is what is my basic pattern of this okay and for my last question for you denis um in turkey for uh, this uh, super mother mothers what kind of foundations or orga- organizations they can reach uh, there are some organizations but it is not enough <laughs> uh, especially during the education uh, period uh, mothers need help because it is not easy uh, for autism autistic child uh, to go to the school mm-hmm. with normal students uh, i am lucky that my son can go to the school but 
there are so many autistic children in Turkey that they cannot go to the school. They stay home. Uh, that's why I insist on they need help and more uh, awareness in the community, in the community, in the country. Yeah. Yes. I hope everything will be better day by day, especially yeah. after this period. Uh, in, I in hope so. <laughs> and Good days will come. I hope so. Soon, I hope. <laughs> and what is your opinion about uh, Turkish uh, super mothers, Samir? Uh, see, I, I always talk to my patients also that uh, when the child is suffering, when the child has any problem, it is the whole family who suffers. Yes. So w when I see the super mothers, why are they becoming super mothers? Because it is also a problem, actually. We have to think of it as a problem that she feels that she'll be able to do everything. And in that, she becomes tired, she becomes like too much, with that too much exertion, tired, weak, frustrated, angry, even suicidal many times. I've seen so many mothers who tell me that I just feel like committing suicide because I'm tired of this child. I mean, can you imagine a mother saying that I'm tired of this child? I want to kill the child. I've seen two, three mothers talking like that. Of course, they don't do it, but they feel they get frustrated so much. So I feel, see, homeopathy itself is a treatment for the whole family. It's not only the child. If you treat the mother also, I think the child can become okay because the mother is, you know, kind of uh, uh, transferring a lot of anxiety, transferring a lot of problems sometimes in the child by too much overcare, over protection because she considers the child special. She considers the child as her own. Of course, every mother cares. But these mothers have found that they are too much overcaring. And this leads to uh, burnout in the mother, for which they also require some treatment. They require counseling. I think Dennis and uh, Gamla, you with your good supports and good influence, probably you can start some centers or online support for these mothers because this support is very much required. Because if the mother is healed, the child also will be healed. Basically. So it's not the child that requires treatment. Sometimes I feel the mother, if she's treated, the child will become. Healed. So mother is the key. Yeah, the mother is it. <laughs> it's always like that. I mean, always, always. while we are practicing family constellation sessions, uh, yeah. it's always the mother. <laughs> you treat the mother and the child becomes okay. Yes, God saves the mothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mothers, mothers are very important. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Samir and Denise, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damla, for giving thank me this so opportunity. Much. Thank okay, you I hope we can do another one soon. For sure, when, whenever yeah. you want. I'm ready. I, for autism and for these children, I'm ready to give all my time and all my life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Denise. Hope to see you, you again. Sure, sure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.